All right. Welcome, everybody. We are here. We're getting toward the end of Manufacturing Month. Um, hopefully you've seen some of our other events or you can find them recorded on our website. Um, anyway, today we are really excited to have the folks from Edwards Vacuum here to talk to us about what they do. Um, as we're getting started, if you will first go to the check-in, it's um, the Bitly STC check-in is in the upper right here. Um, that is how you get you let your school know where you are right this minute. When it's time to finish and give us notes and feedback on this event, you'll go down to the evaluation form over on the upper left. That's how you get credit for being here. If you're watching this as a video after the fact, you can still go get credit for attending by filling out that STC eval 2021 or 21 22. So that's where you'll go to get credit, whether you're watching it live right now or if you're catching the video later. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up special for this month, we have a scholarship program. Um, the applications are due on November 5th, but think about what you're seeing here today and go and look at what it takes to apply for a scholarship. These are $500 scholarships. They don't have to be used for college. They can be used for training, tools, you know, any ideas that you have that will help you make a career in STEM or pursue something in, in uh, manufacturing. It's all, you know, based on what you're interested in. And hopefully we're expanding your interests right now. Um, the final thing on this slide is our great questions document. You may have received this in the email. Um, if you didn't get an email reminder, you can always go grab this bit.ly for the great questions document, and that will give you some really good ways to start conversations with professionals whenever you might need to. Um, as we're moving forward, we'll ask that you be fully present and paying attention to our presenters and asking questions. Um, if you are in a place where you feel comfortable, we would love to have you turn on your cameras so that they can see your faces. Um, please keep your microphone off unless you're asking questions just to reduce background noise. You're also welcome to put the questions in the chat and we will help moderate that. Um, and one more time, reminder, the only way that you get credit, career credit for being here through your school is to submit your evaluation. So thank you so much for being here. I'm going to hand it over to our presenters now. Thanks so much. Hi, everyone. Um, so we are uh, from Edwards Vacuum, and I'm going to let um, Maduri and Adam tell you all about the company. Um, uh, Galdulox, do we have, um, are you moderating this or um, do we just start with a questionnaire? Just go, um, yeah, let's start with, or kind of like introduce yourselves and how did you get the career? What's your career path? Like what's the important for being a high school student? What do they wanna know like subject wise to get ready for this kind of career? Great. Um, so I, I'm I'm Blanche and I'm in HR and human resources here at Edwards Vacuum. And I'm gonna let Adam and Maduri have the stage here. Um, so Adam is one of our production managers, and then Maduri is one of our um, engineers um, here at Edwards Vacuum. And so they would be able to let you know about what we can offer. All right. Hello, uh, appreciate everyone attending. Uh, so yeah, my name is Adam Kupchek. Um, I've been working in the semiconductor industry for about 20 years. Um, I've worked in several positions as a operator, a technician, team lead, supervisor. Uh, currently I'm a cell leader at Edwards Vacuum. Um, at Edwards Vacuum, uh, so Edwards Vacuum makes the pumps that we sell to companies like Intel, um, the pumps are used to remove the harmful gases that are created during the wafering process. But then my team assembles the frames that the pumps uh, are, lo are loaded into and the frame system controls the pumps. Um, yeah, I guess, so 
Yeah, that's the introduction. I'll pass it on to my okay. colleague. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Madhuri Korampali. Um, I actually recently changed my job, uh, our role. Um, so currently, um, I, I used to work as an applications engineer in Edwards Vacuum. Um, so for the past four years, um, so I joined in 2017. Um, right after my, um, so I, I have a, a PhD degree in electrical engineering. Um, I worked as a, as a postdoctorate right after that. Uh, before I joined Edwards um, in 2017. Um, so I joined as an applications engineer. Uh, so my my role was um, a customer facing role where um, I would take the customer requirements, uh, pro specific process requirements, understand their chemistry. And um, as Adam just mentioned, we uh, are an equipment supplier. We supply vacuum pumps and abatement equipment to uh, customers like Intel, Samsung, TSMC. Um, so vacuum pumps, again, as Adam mentioned, we, we are helpful to remove, um, uh, to create a vacuum in, this, in, the, in their customer process chambers. And uh, the abatement equipment is to uh, make sure the, um, the harmful gases or the, the chemistries that the customer uses in their processes are uh, treated uh, before the gases are released to the atmosphere. Um, so they are made less toxic. Um, so yeah, my role was to take all the inputs from the customers uh, and provide them with our product recommendations. Um, so in my new role, which I just started like a couple of weeks ago, um, I uh, am the applications uh, knowledge manager. So coordinating all the, all the uh, regions um, globally uh, all the applications knowledge globally in, in across all the regions uh, in the world and uh, trying to um, coordinate all the information and help cross-functional teams um, to, uh, to communicate better and to enable knowledge sharing. So everyone in the company, the applications team as a whole globally is um, basically on the same page. And can you tell us a little bit about what each of you do um, for it, like on a day-to-day -day basis and how, um, like what kind of education or training that they need to be, have in order to be where you are right now? Um, yeah, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, so, like I said, I was in a customer facing role. So I, I number one for that role, um, the skills that we need to have are in addition to the technical skills are uh, communication, um, working with different levels of people, uh, different personalities. Um, so having that soft skills is important and uh, coming to the technical uh, background uh, because because I work for semiconductor-based companies, um, knowledge of semiconductor processes um, is, is important. Again, that's something that I was um, able, fortunate enough to you know, achieve through the courses I took in my uh, undergraduation and my uh, uh, master's or PhD degrees. So uh, that helped me to get to where I, to where I am. Uh, so yeah, my, my day to day, uh, basically I'm the supervisor for the assembly team. I currently have 50 team members that are direct reports. Um, my primary responsibility is to ensure that team members have the tools and knowledge to perform the tasks involved with the job that they have. Um, my position requires a lot of communication, collaboration, uh, working with the different departments, the planning department to make sure that assemblies are completed on time for the customer, uh, engineering team to make sure that the designs, if they're incorrect, to make sure that feedback is given back to the engineering team. Uh, I work with procurement to make sure parts are ordered on time or if we have any shortages. I work with the warehouse team. I work with HR and personnel issues. Uh, definitely the soft skills, absolutely critical. It's the communication, working with all the different departments 
And you know, the key point is all the departments have their own priorities, other projects that they're also working on. So just that, that engagement and soft skills, being able to work with folks. And then um, what advice would you give someone planning to pursue a career in your, in your perspective um, department? Um, in terms of the ad uh, advice, I would say um, the more exposure you have, uh, the more knowledge you get. So uh, I, again, keeping track of what's going on in, in the world across different companies, uh, you know, staying ahead, following, you know, on social media, even like uh, LinkedIn is a great platform to follow companies that you know, do do this kind of are in the, in the semiconductor industry, right? So, following those companies, reading what's what, what, where the technology is headed, um, so it's staying up to date uh, will give a lot of um, knowledge and confidence. Um, and again, I don't want to stress too much on the courses because that's something that will come. When you when you decide to be in this field, that that's that that basically follows. Um, but the other aspect is, um, if if there if, if there is any chance attending conferences or talks, there are a lot of platforms which offer, um, you know, even free talks uh, related to this field. So I would encourage um, pursuing that. Um, and yeah, networking networking is a great. Uh, um, the, the other thing that's really important, the more contacts you make, the more um, more chances you would end up in a in a in a good company. Yeah, I think uh, for leadership or you know just being in any industry at any level, um, you know I think adaptability is absolutely critical. Uh, I think that's one of the things that have separated me from other teammates that have allowed me to, to move up and to advance my career development. Um, you know, any goal, project, task, there's always gonna be something that pops up. You know, we always try to plan and prepare and make sure that we are doing what we need to do to prevent issues, but there's always the unknown. You know, I think COVID is a good example. You know, the whole reality changed. Um, it's just about adapting, overcoming, and working through it uh, at the, as a cell lead, you know, basically my job is to keep the team moving. Uh, a lot of individuals, you know, when issues pop up that they, they want to stop and, I guess, complain. <laughs> you know, it just takes uh, adaptability to, to really keep things moving forward. Then also, I, I think just overall, especially in leadership, but any position, any industry, um, just, you know, being willing to make mistakes and learning from mistakes. Um, you know, any tasks that you perform, you're going to get training on it. You're going to have on-the-job training, uh, schooling, um, you know, videos. There's always opportunities to train and learn, and you're always going to make mistakes. Just be open to make mistakes. I think, from my experience, team members that are not progressing as fast as others are due to lack of confidence and lack of uh, ability to, to be willing to make mistakes. Mistakes are good. Can I ask just a quick question about, um, could you tell me a little bit about maybe what product you are most proud of or a problem that you solved that was really interesting and exciting to you? Um, I, I think every... that, so we have a question on actually the chat that, like, oh, great. Let, let okay. me start off with that first, like Perfect. what kinds of manufacturing do we do in our facility? And Adam and Maduri, correct me if I'm wrong, but like um, like Adam mentioned earlier, we make vacuum systems for clean rooms for places such as Intel, Texas Instruments, Samsung, any company, um, semiconductor company that has a clean room. Um, we also are doing abatement now. Is that correct, Adam? Right. I think Adam is... Uh, Frozen oh, I'm muted. A little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to be 
yeah, we're going to be starting an abatement assembly next month on site. And so we mainly do here. So Adam is part, um, actually, are you part of the product company now, Midori, as well? Or, or are you still customer center? I am still customer center. Customer yeah. center. Okay. Yeah. So I, I chose Madhuri and Adam because, um, so Adam is in our product company, which is where we put together. All the vacuum systems, the systems that we then bring into Intel and then um, Madhuri is part of the customer center. And in the customer center, we're face to face with the customer. Um, we have technicians on site um, installing and maintaining the systems. And so we are working inside of Intel um, for the most part um, in order to do that. I'm not sure, is that does that answer that question about manufacturing, what kind of manufacturing that we do? I think so. Heather? Um, okay. <laughs> I okay. hope so. I think it does. Um, yeah. Let's see. And then um, what was your follow-up question? Um, so my question was, um, is there a favorite, a favorite okay. you know, a most, a product that you're most proud of or a problem that you solved that you really feel like exceptionally well demonstrates what you do or, or what you like about your job? Um, I, I can talk about one uh, project that I was working on with um, one of the customers. Um, so they uh, had a competitor product, which was, which was not working up to their expectations. And so the customer approached us for a solution. And, um, uh, you know, initially we proposed something um, that worked up to a point. And then uh, there were some problems because the customer changed their process. As, as we know, this industry is ever changing. Um, so the customer changed their process recipe where they were using uh, more of a toxic su substance, which was harmful uh, for our pumps as well. Um, so we were at a point where we had to improve our solution. Um, so it uh, so this is where the cross-functional teams come into play where, um, okay, we have this product, we have to improve it. Uh, we, I, as an applications engineer, cannot do it myself. So I have to contact the product uh, product company, um, contact contact the uh, the factory, uh, the engineering team, the tech support team. So it's, it was all a joint collaboration where we worked together. We um, uh, came up with a, an improvement protocol, implemented that on the customer side, and um, it, it was a success. So that's, that's a success story that I um, I'm proud of. I think the most recent uh, project, um, so I've been at Edwards for about two and a half years. Before I started with Edwards, actually the assembly of the frame units uh, was actually over in New York, Niagara Falls. Uh, so part of coming on board was uh, tasked to move the assembly from New York to the Hillsborough site. Um, part of that was or the primary reason for the change in location was the proximity to Intel. Um, I'm sure all of you guys know that, you know, Intel's the, the largest employer in Oregon, and there are a lot of companies that work around Intel that are suppliers to Intel. Um, so just the transition from site, you know, that, that required a lot of collaboration uh, and travel. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the semiconductor companies are global. There's usually opportunities for team members or employees to travel, um, you know, if they're willing to travel. Um, you know, I think just successfully bringing up that project and transferring the, the assembly over was a big opportunity. And, uh, you know, we were able to successfully do that. And a lot of that did require collaboration with all the, the different groups, purchasing and, and engineering. But also, Day to day, a lot of companies, actually every company that I've worked for in the semiconductor industry, you know, there's a focus on continuous improvement. It's not really about the big changes. As far as on the floor, the assembly or operations, it's about continuous improvement, just making small changes every day, every week. Then over the years, 
So it, it adds up to, you know, a lot of time saving, a lot of cost saving, you know, just, you know, having team members suggest, you know, different tool ideas or uh, different methods of performing the tasks or maybe a safer uh, way of, you know, handling material. Just really the, the continuous improvement and looking for the small opportunities. It, it, you know, it doesn't have to be big changes. Do people, do you feel like your team has a lot of opportunities to be creative and, and help solve problems or find efficiencies? Yeah, you know, I really, I think that's part of, uh, actually every company wants to improve. Every company that I've worked for, especially in the leadership roles that I've been in, I'm always looking for folks that are, you know, willing to, to voice opinions and come up with ideas. And again, that comes back to the collaboration, uh, you know, raising concerns constructively, communicating clearly what the idea is and understanding, you know, everyone has different viewpoints. Um, you know, there's more than one way to do something. Uh, just really, it takes the individual to to really have that confidence and that ability to to voice their suggestions and, and raise their their ideas up to their team leads and supervisors. So I think that question the. Um... What, uh, the, so the next question that we're gonna discuss is what makes you fit well within your profession? Um, so what makes me fit well? Um, so I think, uh, again, it comes down to my previous point about communication, um, not feeling shy about, so when you don't know anything, or when you don't know something, uh, don't feel shy to ask. Ask for help, ask for clarification, uh, ask for more information. So, um, and I think that's that's one uh, aspect of myself that, um, uh, you know, when I don't know something, I always try to look for that information, whether it's asking a colleague, my manager, or looking online um, or reading some material. Um, so um, that's, that's I, I believe that's, important. Um, and um, again, I, I uh, also had some previous academic uh, courses that I took, which helped me understand um, this role. And again, that's not the end of the world, because in my role as an applications engineer, I um, deal a lot with chemistry, but I don't have a chemistry background. So my background is electrical engineering. So whatever you do, it it does not directly translate to the job you're doing. That's what I'm trying to say here. Because once you're on the job, whatever you, the courses you took or whatever experience you have, every job is different. So you start from ground zero in every role you take and uh, having the, the zeal uh, and enthusiasm to learn um, the aspects of your role and uh, getting to know all uh, the information and uh, talking to people that's more important than your past. So, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that last comment about, uh, you know, don't wait. Um, it's very easy for someone to say, oh, you know, no one told me or you know, I'm waiting for so-and-so to tell me what to do. Uh, you know, take that initiative, that communication to voice your concern. If you don't understand something, definitely uh, you know, investigate and, you know, look into the answer, make sure that you're getting the training that you need. Do not rely on others to get the training. Um, I, I think that's one thing that, that has helped me in my career, and especially in leadership. Um, but also just overall, uh, you know, mechanical hands-on. I do my own car maintenance. Um, I do my own home repairs. I'm very hands-on. I think that does help me in the assembly you know, process being on the floor. Um, and then just overall, uh, as a leader, you know, I, enjoy, I do enjoy helping people. I enjoy the team members that are working hard. They come in, they want to develop. They, you know, they're, they're asking me questions. 
they're engaged. I like seeing those team members get promoted in, into team league roles, into support roles, you know, make more money, take on more responsibility, and really have more fun in their jobs. Um, and then also, just, again, adaptability. I, I've always been very open to change. Um, again, you know, I think a lot of people kind of just come in, do what they need to do, and go home. I, I've never been like that. I, I like change. I like learning. You know, I like adventure. Uh, so yeah, adaptability, definitely in communication. You know, have the confidence to say you don't know. And then just, uh, yeah, engagement in my job. You know, I come in to, to work and to develop myself. Uh, I don't come in just to earn a paycheck. I definitely agree like um with what they both said like if you know you don't again don't don't um focus on one like subject like you know um i started off my career not knowing what i wanted i took general classes and that kind of um also made me figure out that you know what i'm really i really love making a difference and i really enjoy human resources therefore i'm gonna move over to that specific like subject um, so i totally agree so the next question um would you do anything uh what would you have done anything differently in high school that would have helped you in your current job um Yes, there are a few things. So when I was in high school, I, I again, my high schooling was in, in India. I'm from India. Um, so back there, I, again, I don't know what I wanted to become. Um, so I don't know which direction I need to take. But what I would have done differently is um, maybe trying to uh, keep up with the uh, with the with knowing just uh, what companies are out there, what they do, just you know, okay, there is this huge semiconductor company called Intel. They are they do leading edge technology, but what are they actually doing? So everyone, all the kids these days have phones in their hand. They have like the latest latest phones, but I not everyone is aware that okay, these are the companies that are making. Uh, these phones work and these phones work faster, having more features, uh, amazing cameras, uh, right? So we don't really think about it when we are in high school. So um, just having, uh, I guess, a conscious thinking, I guess, um, about where life is headed, uh, what these big companies are doing, just the basics doesn't have to be okay. What is going on in the process? How are they doing it? That's beyond um, a 16 or 17 year old's capability. But you know, just being aware of what's going on is, I think, um, what I should have done. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my personal statement. Yeah, I also agree with awareness. Uh, I think. I Wish I would have been more self-aware, uh, had been a little more open to feedback. Um, you know, I think at a younger age, I don't know, you kind of assume you know what's going on and maybe a little too arrogant at times. Uh, you know, I, I wish I, I guess I was more open to learning, more open to feedback. Um, you know, as I move through my career, I, I come to understand that feedback is absolutely essential. Um, and then also, it's absolutely critical not to take feedback personal. Um, I think, you know, high school, Adam <laughs> definitely took stuff a little more personal and, and wasn't open to receiving the message, but feedback is absolutely essential. Uh, it's definitely the worst case scenario is to be in a situation where no one's giving you feedback. Either, you know, you're, you're, you're not being receptive to it, you're, you're being negative when people give you feedback. I, I welcome feedback. I accept all feedback. I wish I would have learned that lesson earlier. 
and I also I also agree, you know, like keep like Maduri said, keep your mind open to different things that's going on. Um, and also I would add on like I it took me a while to not take feedback personally, but once you learn it, that you can like, you know, you can ask more questions. And now I'm asking, can you let me know how I'm doing? Like, and you know, if they give you negative feedback, then ask them, well, how can I change that? So with my HR manager, I always ask her, like, can you please just let me know um, what I'm doing wrong right away and how I can fix it. Because if I don't know what I'm doing wrong, then I'm not going to be able to fix it. And I'm not going to perform better. Um, so being an open, having an open mind is always great. So, um, so we have a question on the chat box that says, um, Something about the forecast is Edwards growing right now and what kind of employees are you looking for? So let me answer that first. Um, so we are actually, our forecast for next year is we're growing about twice as much as we are right now. Um, we normally answer to our customers' needs. So for example, Intel is asking us to double our capacity. Um, and I believe like Adam and Maduri can attest to that um, for our employees. So. Um, Take it away. Um, yes, uh, it, Edwards is definitely growing. Um, so what kind of employees are you looking for? I think that's, um, we are looking for a, a, a lot of employees like in, in different areas, uh, in product companies, uh, in applications, uh, field service engineers, uh, technicians, uh, everywhere we are in need of people, right? Uh, because again, you know, because of the pandemic, there is um, this supply chain issues everywhere. Uh, every customer has a lot of demands now. They uh, they need such and such equipment by such and such date. And uh, again, because of the supply chain issues, there is a backlog, a huge backlog, I should say and everyone is ramping production. Um, so the demand is high and everyone is looking for new talent, new people. And uh, I guess it's a company wide thing where every um, every group is looking for people like, like I just mentioned a few. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out there. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of opportunities for like internship as well. Um, so yeah, definitely check out uh, the career page and keep an eye out there. We are developing an internship program um, in the beginning of the year. We're asking, we asked all of our hiring managers, both in PC and CC about um, if they're interested in an intern. And so we also have education reimbursements. So if you are, you know, for example, you start out in production and you eventually want to become like, you know, to grow within the company and become a leader like Adam or like an engineer like Maduri, um, we do offer education reimbursement as long as it is relevant to your work and growing within the company. Adam, would you like to add something to that? Uh, yeah, as far as uh, for the assembly team, uh, I mean, you know, we're always looking for folks that are uh, eager to learn and ready to basically be hands-on and, and able to do some work. Um, you know, there's interviews that we've had that, you know, folks, you know, it's hard to even have a conversation with them. <laughs> you know, we ask them questions and they can't even answer basic questions. Uh, just, you know, you don't have to have experience, but, you know, you know, draw on, you don't have to have work experience, but, you know, in any interview, just draw on your personal experience. Uh, you know, we're, we're always just looking for folks that are willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Um, and then, yeah, it was mentioned all the areas are, are hiring right now. We have planning positions open, purchasing, engineering, HR, technical writers, designers, sales <laughs> assemblers. Um, but yeah, right now it, it's, yeah, the, the, the candidate market with everyone, all the companies are hiring basically right now. It, it's hard to, to get team members in. Um, yeah, basically we're just looking for team members that are willing to come in and work. Um, I think attendance, the individuals that are not successful 
you know, the new hires, it's usually folks that are late, uh, they don't show up. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious that they just don't want to work or they're not setting goals. So yeah, I guess goal setters. Um, so do you foresee any fundamental changes coming in the next few years? Have you talked about that yet? Say that again. Have you, um, do you foresee any fundamental changes in the next few years in our industry? The next few years? Uh, from my point of view, and again, I've, I've been in the industry for over 20 years, about 21 years. Uh, I've never seen growth like this. A lot of it is due to the backlog, um, but I think it's going to continue to grow. I mean, you know, the smartphones keep getting smarter. Uh, cars keep getting more automated. You know, all that requires memory and microprocessors, which, you know, that, that's good for the semiconductor industry. Uh, I think it's just going to continue to grow. Yeah, um, I, I agree with Adam. So uh, there are, the technology is ever changing. Um, the If you see the devices that were like, so the cell phones, for example, that were like 10 years ago, uh, to compare them to what they are today, it's a huge difference. It's a huge leap in technology. And um, there is, there, there are, um, there's only so much we can do on a chip. So all these huge companies are trying to see what else can they do, build in three dimensions. Uh, how, can, how else can they make devices smaller, faster, more reliable? So they are changing their processes using newer chemistries um, to make that happen in, in, in future. So um, when these companies are headed that way, as an equipment supplier, Edwards need to be on par with them to make products that are compatible with those new chemistries, uh, make sure our um, products are um, suitable to address the customer requirements. So we have to be on par with these companies as well. So things are constantly evolving and changing, um, like developing new products or um, you know, making changes to the existing ones so we can satisfy the customer requirements. So yes, uh, we are always um, um, you know, looking for that improvement and to be on par with the customers. And it looks like um, on the last thing that's on the sheet is, um, I think we talked about most of what this already listed. Um, what would like? What would be our advice to make students and candidates more employable? Um, I think we talked. Adam and Maduri talked a lot about communication and making sure that you're aware about what's going on around you, and you know, making sure that you're open-minded, um, willing to learn. Um, I think that most of our our candidates that we've hired recently, they're willing to learn, willing to do what it takes in order to work, right? Um, so if you're going to be open-minded and willing to learn and, you know, willing to do whatever it takes to grow within a company, then that's going to be what's going to go for you. Like that's, that's you know, that's it. That's, we have a lot of entry-level positions that you can start with. And then, you know, we encourage promotion from within and we also encourage education reimbursement. So, um, I mean, I, th I think, is there anything else that you would like to add Maduri and Adam? I think that's pretty much the gist, right? Right, yes, uh, you pretty much summarized everything that, that we just said. Are there any other questions um, that's not listed on the questionnaire or any additional follow-up questions that the students might wanna ask? No? Any questions that you may not feel comfortable asking? I mean, I have, you know, like we are here for your resource. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so no? much for being okay. here. I know it's hard to hard to figure out what the questions are right in the moment. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. It it's really interesting to hear the variety of positions that you have, um, and and I love that you can bring people in at an entry level and help them progress with educational help and and you know promotion from within. That's really important to get people in and help them move up. So, all right. And Blanche has posted a jobs link, jobs email. If any students have questions or anything that you'd like to ask as a follow up, but thank you so much. Um, just for those who are watching this as a video later, the link, if you'd like to reach out about job jobs and uh, any future questions, further questions, it's usjobs at edwardsvacuum.com. So thank you so much for being here, all of you. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording and then um, people can turn on their cameras and wave goodbye or give us a thumbs up and say thank you. So and, thanks so much. And thank you so much, Adam and Maduri, for spending some time with us from your busy schedule. I really, we really all appreciate you. Yes. Thank you.